So in this video, we're going to go into a, a bigger picture on what dealing with free radicals means and why it's important to check your genes on these and why the three genes were chosen and what um, uh, the most important gene, MN SOD, is and why that's really critical and what we can do about it. So the way to understand the importance is that your, your cell, every cell of your body is like a microscopic city. And if you have a city, your city only survives if you have electricity. Uh, there are examples in ancient history of very big cities that manage without electricity, uh, but they had their own issues such as uh, having to haul away lots of human waste and, and horse waste and other domesticated animal waste and burning of lots and lots and lots of, of uh, animal fat. Uh, if you want an interesting factoid, the oil industry ironically saved the whales uh, because uh, the whales were hunted around the world for their particular uh, fat, which was used to make candles and burn for heat and light. And it was the oil industry that dropped the need for hunting of so many whales because we were able to generate heat and light through other means. Uh, you can read about it in the book Freakonomics. Uh, fascinating. I highly recommend the audio version. I listened to that. Uh, I remember listening to that actually in graduate school. It was the only book I ever sat in the car and finished and was late to class because it was that interesting. Uh, I'm just remembering that now. Anyway, I'll put the nostalgia to the side. The point being is that you need uh, sources of light and heat and elect basically electricity to run a modern city to supply this number of people in such a tight space. And your cells are like that. And so if your mitochondria, this electricity factory, if it breaks down for whatever reason, you know, your city's not going to be able, your cells are not going to be able to function that well. Just like if electricity went out in a, in a bigger city, you know, it's going to be three days till it's Mad Max. And everyone's going to be just surviving barely off of candles and, and, and batteries, and it's just going to get ugly. So um, the, uh, the thing about your mitochondria is it is that electricity factory. So we need to make sure that it's functioning properly. And one of the ways that it can function improperly is that it generates a lot of sparks inside the factory as it's generating electricity. So your mitochondria take proteins, fats, and amino acids and, and combine it with oxygen inside the factory to generate ATP, which is your cell's electricity. And when you do that, you make sparks. It's just the nature of it. 95% of all sparks, or free radicals, are made inside the mitochondria. So you need to have a really efficient group of janitors to keep all the sparks at bay, because when things spark, then the sparks can land and light the machinery on fire, or the factory on fire, or the, like just, just stuff, stuff will light on fire, and that's bad. So you need some really savvy, uh, quick-acting janitors to keep everything from lighting on fire. And in the mitochondria, the three janitors are called, uh, the head janitor is called MN sod, which is MN is, is stands for manganese, not magnesium, uh, but manganese uh, superoxide dismutase, that's what the SOD in, in, in MN SOD stands for. So MN SOD, who I call Mr. SOD as the head janitor. Now, there's no Mr. SOD in genetics, it's just me being cutesy and memorable. It's Mr. SOD, he's the head janitor. Then there's his two subordinates, uh, GPX1 and CAT, which stands for glutathione peroxidase 1 and catalase. And so the way that this works is that your mitochondria generate um, oxide radicals, uh, which are very dangerous. And then what, what MN SOD does is it combines, it's this, it's this enzyme, and it takes these two free radicals and it converts them into hydrogen peroxide. Now, the hydrogen peroxide is not very safe, uh, so then the hydrogen peroxide is then converted using the two subordinate janitors, GPX1 and, and CAT, in, in catalase, into oxygen and water, which is amazing. Like, your body literally has the capacity to, to convert free radicals into oxygen and water, which is incredible. So, these janitors are doing amazing things. Now, the problem is, is that if the head janitor uh, is not doing so well, like it's a red or yellow dot, then the entire process gets slowed down 
everything gets slowed down. And so if you've got a yellow dot, especially a red dot, then you, you cannot put out the free radicals well at all uh, as efficiently. So that means you have to live a life of less free radical damage, less free radical exposure, and much more judicious lifestyle to make sure that you've got all the you know, your, your head janitor has less to do and has more time off to rest up to do the job it needs to do. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, so I put the primary focus on what the status is of your head janitor, because if, if that, if the head janitor is not working well, then the other two janitors, it, it's, it's not as relevant anyway. So the, the thing to focus on is from a lifestyle standpoint, in general is to make sure that you're avoiding a high free radical lifestyle. That means avoiding foods that are high in artificial sweeteners, flavorings, colorings, processed food, fast food, deep fried food, old food, air, uh, you know, um, uh, packaged foods, all that, watching out for pollutants like smoking, uh, air pollution, off gassing. Um, you want to stay away from like soot uh, and a lot of high particulate and if you need to get an air filter do it um there's uh, there, there's all sorts of ways basically a very clean healthy lifestyle that we're that, you know you've gotten recommendations for is an anti-free radical lifestyle anyway and then there are foods that support the function of these free radicals but there's certain nutrients that are more helpful than others in terms of um expressing you know helping this 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 janitor, you know, function well. Uh, chief among them would be sulforaphane, which is what we, we talked about in a prior video uh, when it, in the vitamin D section. So there's, and there's, other, there's other things that help with MN sod. Um, uh, they're called SOD inducers. I'll cover all of them in, in detail in another video. But there's, there's, there's more than one thing that can help with uh, inducing or supporting or inspiring Mr. Saad to get out there and, and clean up the free radicals. So that's the, this is the overview of the free radical section of this genetic profile.